Great, everyone could hear me. And please remember if in case I am breaking up, and you hear that kind of static sound again, could be from the internet connection, just let me know. So I will know what to do if I need to reset the box or say whatever I had to say over again. All right. So the plan today, basically, I want to go through this press release from CXE. Most teachers may have done this already, but I need to explain exactly what's happening to HSB because a lot of people think um, HSB is just a multiple choice. After I go through this, I'm going to finish the last um, topic, which we were doing last week, the impact of health practices on the environment. And then I'll correct the homework and then we'll go through the presentations from each group. So I already have some recordings from um, HIV and AIDS group. They sent me the voice note, so I'll play it. For the rest of you all, when is your turn, I'll let you know. And you'll unmute your mic and then you'll present your topic. What? Mute. Anybody else need to mute? Okay, everybody good. All right, so <clears throat> again, this will be recorded. So it will be uploaded onto YouTube. So far, the first Zoom lecture, March 17, as well as March the 24th was already uploaded, if you missed anything, right? All right, so let's go on to the CXC announcement. So as you all know, the exams are postponed till ending of June into July. So most of your exams will be in July. So far, I haven't gotten any feedback as to what date is HSB. Most of the subjects switch to a paper one alone, which is a multiple choice. However, since HSB do not have an SBA component, therefore you all will be required to do a normal paper two exam. So just like what we were preparing for, you will have to write a paper two together with your paper one. So that is multiple choice and structured. I don't know. Um, so far, it's the same time, same amount of questions, no, no much, not much change with HSB. If there's any changes, we will let you all know. On the brighter side, you all have more time to prepare. And uh, some of you all already start what's up in me, the topics that you all want to go through. So we will we'll be able to complete that as well as do enough multiple choice as well as structured questions. Uh, practice. Now, you all will be writing the exam online on CXE's website. Um, I've read that you don't have to have Wi-Fi or internet. It could be done offline as well. So I will go through the handbook, which everyone should download, on how they're going to sign in to write the exam. So that document is on CXE website website as well. The name of the document is A Candidate's Quick Guide to Electronic Testing. So here you will see exactly how the exams are going to be. All right. So everyone would have had um, to register. So these are the the information that is required from you all to log in, the center number, the candidate number, birth certificate number if you don't have these two, then your um, last name, your date of birth. All right. Now these are the system requirements for the pretest. There are a lot of pretests you can go and practice so that you can get into the hang of how the exams will be tested online. I will show you, show you all an example for HSB. Now, a lot of people think that you will not be supervised. You will be supervised because there are invigilators who will be online at that time of the exam and will be looking at what you are doing when you are online. 
especially what is being displayed in your screen. Also, you cannot um, go to YouTube, um, Google on your phone or open a new tab because you could only remain on that particular page. And it's one question at a time. It's not like you've seen all the questions one go and you can go and research the answers and, and enter the answers. CXE is smart. CXE know how to put measures in place to prevent cheating. All right? So please adhere to the rules as... Wait a minute. The exam is online? Yes, the exam um, will be conducted on CXE's website. However, CTS will give you all a step-by-step -step breakdown guide on how you're going to access the exams, all right? This is the uh, manual. I know it's long and lengthy for you all to read, but I will show you all. Um, they will show you all a, a simpler form. Basically, you log in into this website, right? You enter your username and password. Wait, but miss, couldn't people just like pull out their notebook or their phone during the exam while they're uh, um, the nun said they might, we might have to come to school to do it. Okay, oh, all right. Okay. So that will make, that make things easier. Sense. Yeah. But so only about 10 of, people at a time. Right. So there's the computer lab that you all will get access to. So you all will be seated. They will log you all in. Basically, this is how the login will look. Student login, you enter your information. Then, well, whatever subjects that you are scheduled to do will pop up. Like, for instance, IT. This is just an example. This is not a date. Um, they will give you time, the time frame in which the exam will end. So as soon as you click, click to get ready for the exam, the time is rolling. So you don't have time to pull out your notebook. You don't have time to open your phone, um, browse the internet, go through notes, because time will be rolling as soon as you click on that um, link or select start, start test. <clears throat> all right. So I will um, send this document for you all. Your parents and yourself should read through it. Become familiar with the browser. There's a browser called Safe Exam Browser, which you all um, need to read through the instructions and install because that will prevent like the web page from just shutting down or having some kind of technical difficulty. So let me show you all an example of the pretest. Again, the pretest is available on the CXE's website. So I'm going to open the CXE website. And show you all a step by step on how to get the subjects. So once you are on the CXE website, this is how it looks. You are clicking on e-test. These are um, demo tests that you all could take. Now you are doing CSEC exam. So you click on CSEC and whatever subject. So let's go to HSB. Now HSB have the paper too as well. So we will be preparing for both papers as, as usual, as normal. So let me click on HSB paper. So it's one question at a time, all right? We should actually, we should do this one as practice later on in the lecture. But I want to finish off the last topic, go through the um, homework, do the um, group presentations, and then we'll practice this multiple choice as a class, all right? So when you're done answer this question, you have to click next. And then you keep clicking next, and it's 60 multiple choice. So this is good examples they have for each and every CSEC subject, maths included. Not sure how the other subjects work, all right? All right, so let's go back to the last topic, which we already started. The impact of health practices on the environment. This was already sent to you all as well, and it have the simpler version of the notes as well, posted. So basically what we're going to run through today is proper and proper 
sewage disposal practices, the impact of improper sewage disposal practice, two types of treatment of sewage, the parts of the pit latrine and the, the function of it, the importance of it. Then we're going to look at methods of domestic refuse disposal, operations at a landfill, the impact of solid waste on the environment, measures to control it, what does biodegradable and non-biodegradable mean, even list materials that fall under those two categories. Right, so that is basically the um, objectives. So we already went through pollution and water pollution and these things. This is the slide that we reached, sewage. All right, so sewage is... Oh. Sewage is basically waste matter such as feces or dirty water from homes and factories, which flows away through sewers. So you have separate pipelines that is installed from your homes, companies, businesses that will take all that waste from toilets, kitchen sinks, um, bathrooms, even the um, the laundry, water, all of those are flowing to a separate pipe system. They call it the sewers. Sewers contain something called gray water. Gray water contains, like I said, dirty water from washing the dishes, bathing, doing the laundry, toilet water as well when you flush. All right, two treatment methods of sewage. We have the activated sludge method, which is a very lengthy procedure and actually more effective because it helps get rid of a lot of microorganisms in it. Most of the companies use this method or some foreign companies use these two methods together. Um, so far, WASA uses number one. All right, WASA is also our um, sewage authority. Okay, so activated sludge method is a type of wastewater treatment process for treating sewage or industrial waste waters from using aeration. Aeration means that you're applying air directly to a tank. And with that, that is going to allow a bacteria called aerobic bacteria to help break down all the waste that was in the dirty water. So let's go through the steps. So these are the steps, a lot of um, processes. You have the primary treatment. Primary means first. So these are the first steps here. Secondary treatment, well, these are the second type, second steps that follow after. Now with this step, firstly, you have the raw sewage coming in from a sewer line. That is going to be screened first because there's a lot of things that is found in the sewers, like animals, like rats. There's also solid waste, because a lot of people throw items in the toilet bowl and flush it. Even down the arm, like when you're washing wares and stuff, there's a lot of organic waste, like um, potato peels and so forth. So that have to be screened first. When that um, liquid now, that dirty water flows, it is going to be spin using a commute, commutator. So it's spinning and in that way it's flattening whatever little objects or whatever smaller materials that did not, was small enough to pass through the screen. It's flattening it here, making it um, flat. So that when it drains into the grit chamber, grit chamber means it's removing whatever left back from the arm. Um, screening method. So the smaller waste materials will be removed by passing at the bottom of it. So the liquid on top now is transferred into a tank called a primary clarifier. So this is the first tank that is going to clarify that liquid, meaning all the waste is going to settle below and that is going to flow through a separate pipe called the raw or primary sludge. Now this sludge material 
is basically a kind of like thick consistency, thick and smooth. Just like when you're buying sludge, those, that kind of ice cream. Um, you know that sludge ice cream that some people like? Slushies. Slushy, yeah, that's it. It's slushy, obviously, not, not, you're not that color. It's a dark brown color. And this is actually something that is used in agriculture because it has a lot of organic nutrients from the organic waste, like, for instance, the, um, the vegetable peels and those kind of things could enrich the soil. So they could apply this in agriculture. But now the water that is on top is not safe to drink neither. So it have to go through a secondary treatment called the aeration tank. So this is the tank that they apply a lot of air. So you're gonna see an air compressor giving off air and you're gonna see a lot of bubbles as well because it spins it. The water is kind of spinning in there. And in that way, bacteria is breaking down whatever little contaminant because bacteria is break down waste, which is a good thing. So the water now, since the waste was broken down, it is now going to flow into a secondary clarifier. And this, is spin, this also spins at a high speed. So the little waste that was broken down by the bacteria, together with the bacteria itself, will also suspend or um, reach. It will basically settle at the bottom of the tank and also combine together with the sludge. So that is also removed. Notice how blue this water is looking here compared to the primary clarifier. Because of the aeration tank, it removes a lot of the junk and the waste and the gunk from it. So you now have clean sparkling blue water here, which can now be disinfected because you have to disinfect it because you added bacteria to it. You don't want to go and drink water that has bacteria. You're going to disinfect it. What is a chemical used to disinfect the water? You all looked at the water treatment last. Chlorine. 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 Very good. Chlorine is used to kill the microorganisms. And then this water can now flow back to the back to normal water to treat. All right, they could go through the same water treatment again. And then you have nice portable water, which is now being distributed into the homes. So Believe it or not, you all may have used or drank water that were part of sewage. Can you all believe that? All right, moving on to the next method called the biological filter method. Iodine tablets, Sophia, is it's so it's supposed to be chlorine tablets. Iodine is not used to um, purify water. Chlorine is. And I also have a video to show you all about that um, method, which we spoke about earlier. Maybe I could pull up YouTube and get it, since it's fresh in your head. All right, so let's look at how that activated sludge method works. Sometimes seeing it in a flow chart might not be easy to understand. So sewage treatment. I think I send this to the group. If not, I'll send it. So how do wastewater treatment plan works? Let's take a look. It's a topic we'd rather not think about. Where does last night's dinner go? Well, you may already be grossed out just thinking about it. This question leads way to a significant subset of civil engineering and a massive amount of public funding. Just like all dogs go to heaven, all drains in a city lead to a wastewater treatment plant. Plant where that wastewater gets turned back into water that people drink. Now, you may be thinking that you'd rather just let bygones be bygones. Right, so this is the tank that I was talking about. This nasty part of real life. But here's the thing. Chances are you've drunk water that was waste at some point. So you might want to take some time to understand 
and this engineering process that makes dirty water clean. Here's where it starts, the toilet. Once you're done doing your business and flush that magical handle, your waste ends up at the inlet of one pretty interesting place, a wastewater treatment plant. Why is this place so interesting? Because it takes arguably one of the most disgusting substances in the world and turns it back into something that is essential to all life. Flushing just your toilet at half time may not seem like a big deal, but when you couple it with thousands, if not millions, of others doing the same, it can result in some pretty high sewage flow rates. New York City has an array of 14 wastewater treatment plants that handle a combined 1.3 billion gallons of wastewater daily. That's enough wastewater to fill the Dead Sea with pure sewage in just eight years. And that's just New York City. There are an estimated 14,748 treatment plants in the U.S. alone that 76% of the U.S.A.'s population relies on, according to the American Society of Civil Engineers. Understanding wastewater is crucial to understanding the critical infrastructure needed to support modern life. That brings us to the first step of the process that handles larger items in sewage, things like flushable wipes, 2x4s, toys, or even guns. You name it, and it's probably been... So, you'll see the kind of items that can be flushed down into your toilets. So that is why it's so important to have a screening method to remove those objects. Caught in a bar screen. Bar screens are exactly what you would think. They are large vertical bars that stand at the inlet of nearly every wastewater treatment plant designed to stop larger items from getting to the plant and hurting machinery like pumps. This first process where bar screens are used is commonly referred to as pretreatment. The sole intention of pretreatment is to remove the outliers. Pretreatment is also known as primary treatment. Or slightly less chunky. Bar screens are typically mechanically raked at certain intervals depending upon the flow rates of the water treatment plant, although some older plants will still have more manual removal processes. Whatever is removed from the bar screens is then sent off to your average landfill or solid waste handling facility. Or, in the case of unusual items such as guns, they're sent off to the evidence locker in a police station to be investigated. Next up is the grit chamber. Grit chambers are the next steps in the pretreatment process following bar screens. Since these bars don't catch everything, larger particles called grit still need to be removed from the sewage as it is made even more homogenous. As the sewage flows into the grit chamber, the velocity of the rather viscous sewage is adjusted to allow for particles of sand and rock to settle out. This is needed because these particles can't be removed using chemicals, and they could potentially clog or destroy pumps later on in the process. So grit chamber or grit removal means removing the solids that was in the wastewater. So that could be pebbles, stones, dirt, and even little um, larger objects that was not, that was small enough to pass through the screen from the screening method. And that's, you need to remove that because why? It could clog the pumps. It could clog and destroy the pumps. There are three types of these chambers, horizontal grit chambers, aerated grit chambers, and vortex grit chambers, which all accomplish the same task using slightly different methods. Following the grid chambers, the sewage will move on to the primary treatment process, which starts with a large basin called a primary clarifier. Primary clarifiers and clarifiers in general function on the principle of settling velocity. This term can be defined simply as the speed at which a particle settles. For wastewater being pumped into clarifiers, it's important that the flow rate of the water being pumped in primary clarifiers in accordance with the plant's permitted sewage flow rate. This ensures that at varying flow levels, solids can settle out of primary clarifiers to the correct quantities. At this step in the process, the slightly treated wastewater, which is referred to as effluent, is free of solids larger than 10 micrometers and should be all organic matter, which will be treated further. The top layer of the clarified water flows over a rear wall and into the next phase of the process called the aeration basin. Now begins the process of secondary treatment the sole focus of which is to significantly degrade the biological content of the sewage. In many cases, this process starts with aeration basins. Effluent flows into the aeration basins, at the bottom of which are hundreds, if not thousands, of tiny air blowers that create bubbles through the water. The water is pumped into this tank along with something called return-activated sludge. You can think of return-activated sludge as a bunch of happy little bacteria that get to eat their favorite foods all day long. 
This introduction of significant amounts of bacteria along with these massive amounts of oxygen injected from the bubblers creates an environment perfect for the process of aerobic digestion. Summarized simply, it's the breakdown of organic matter along with the use of excess oxygen. Some older plants will add in another step before aeration basin is referred to as biofilters or trickling filters. Found in many older plants, these filters essentially trickle the effluent over a medium like stone or plastic and allow for a film of bacteria to chow down on any organic matter in the water. This step is largely not used in newer plants due to more efficient and effective modern processes, but for plants with basins already installed, many still use them because they only benefit the treatment process in most cases. Following the aeration basins, the effluent along with much of the sludge is pumped into a secondary filter or clarifier where some of the sludge is removed and pumped back into the aeration basins as the return activated sludge. Further settling of larger particles is also accomplished in these basins as it is the final step of the process that will remove solids and larger biological matter. Water flows out of secondary clarifiers over a nearly identical weir wall to the primary clarifiers and moves on to the disinfection process. At this point, 85% of all organic matter is removed from the water and the effluent should be safe to drink in most cases, although you probably wouldn't want to. Disinfection is the final step of the process and is usually accomplished in one of three ways, either through chlorine, ozone, or ultraviolet disinfection. Each process has its benefits and drawbacks, with each being used commonly throughout the wastewater treatment process across the world. Chlorine disinfects the water through chemical <coughs> disinfection. Chlorine, which you can think of as concentrated bleach, is added to the effluent here to kill off any remaining bacteria and organisms still living in the water. When chlorine is added to kill off the bacteria, it then has to be removed before it can be discharged, as to not kill off anything in the discharge location. After this, the water is safe enough to discharge into a stream or lake. Ozone disinfection is another method of disinfection that involves pumping an electrical current through the water. Okay, so basically, besides chlorine, you could use a molecule called ozone, and you could also use sunlight to purify water, all right? So that sums up the steps for the activated sludge method. The last part of this video is actually talking about the biological filter method. So let me go back to the steps one more time, just so it's clear. So basically you have your primary treatment, which involves the screening part. Then it involves the grid chamber. And uh, then the water will flow into the primary clarifier where Clarifier means it settles, all the waste settles. Then it moves on to the secondary treatment, which involves the aeration tank. And then we have a secondary clar clarifier. And then lastly, disinfect disinfecting stage. And then if you have your safe water that could be discharged. It can be discharged into lakes, rivers, or streams, or it can be now taken into our next treatment method, which is the water treatment method, which we looked at last week. All right, so moving on to the next method, you all hearing me, right? Biological filter method. Now this one is one tank, all right? Biological filter method because it have microorganisms in it and you have a lot of, you have a filtration system set up in the tank. So you have a lot of sand, a lot of small particles that will basically filter the water when it flows into this tank. You have something called gravel. We all, you all know what is gravel. And this will help filter the waste, the solid waste, organic waste. And the microorganism in this tank will break down the organic waste. And then you have the discharged water, the clean water being flowed out of the tank. A lot of people don't trust this method because it is just one tank, so they feel like the water will still be contaminated and not um, filtered and disinfected as, you know, the previous method, the activated sludge. But some people use the two methods in combination to make the water safe to use. All right, so let's go back to the video just to hear what they have to say about the biological filter method. 
water that causes oxygen molecules, O2, to disassociate and combine with a free oxygen molecule. Rather, they're sterilized, reducing microbes immediately following UV treatment. Any harmful bacteria would be unable to multiply or treated water is released back into a stream or lake or other water source. In rare cases, usually in areas where water is scarce, the effluent discharge from a wastewater treatment plant can be discharged into another treatment plant directly where it will be treated further for consumption. This is referred to as full cycle water reuse. From a chemical perspective, the final drinking water is the same as normal treated water that flows through your pipes now. But due to the connotation of your drinking water being sewage just days before, this treatment process is normally shied away from or not heavily publicized. The entire process of wastewater treatment takes on average 24 to 36 hours from when a drop of water enters to when it leaves. Each wastewater plant will receive a permit for flow rates, chemical levels, and effluent quality, among other things, from the EPA that outlines the necessary treatment for a plant. Wastewater plant operators will make adjustments to a plant's operation and constantly measure levels to ensure proper discharge and proper treatment. Without these operators and the dirty job that they do around the clock, our sewage would always stay sewage and sanitation in modern cities would be much, much worse. Wastewater treatment is an essential dirty job and you can thank the 14,748 treatment plants in the U.S. alone for not having to worry about what happens when you flush. Okay, so my bad. I thought I would have mentioned the biological filter method. But they did show it in the last clip here. This is the tank. And in the tank, they have the water. They have water sprinkling on it. And then they have a lot of um, the, the filtering material, which is sand, gravel, all of that in the tank. And then the water will trickle through that filtering system. And the microorganisms in the tank will break down the waste that is in the tank. All right, so that's the two, two methods in which you could treat sewage, by the way. All right, so moving on. Any questions so far? Everybody good? I'm glad to see Adonai, finally. Who else is here? All right, everybody good. Great, thank you, Emily. All right, so this is just a comparison of the two methods. Firstly, the biological filter method, the bacterial growth is fixed on the media, meaning that it's one tank and the bacteria is already applied into the tank. Whereas activated sludge is the bacteria has to be suspended onto the wastewater. So you have to apply the bacteria in this case, not like the biological filter method. Also, all solids from the settler are wasted, whereas in activated sludge method, solids from the settler are partially recycled. So certain um, waste that is settled at the bottom turns into something called sludge. So when they say partially, re partially recycled, they mean that the sludge is not going to be used in agriculture. However, for this other method, it is wasted. They get rid of it. The biological, let me just say BF, BFM is less sensitive to shock loading, more stable because it's one tank. And as you all see, it's located at the bottom of the um, ground, whereas activated sludge, there are a lot more tanks, so therefore it's a little more sensitive. And they require a lot of maintenance and um, quality checking every single day. Since the BFM is one tank, it produces a lot of insects. Because a lot of insects have come into the tank and there's a, a stench emanating from it. However, the ASM method produces spray clouds. So there's a lot of um, like water vapor being released from the tanks. So therefore it's kind of keeping down, keeping away the smell and insects from even coming into the tank. The BFM is less effective in removing pathogens. Because again, it's one tank, they don't have any clarifier, they don't have any screen, 
they do have the disinfect the disinfectant stage whereas the asm has all those stages all right and since the bfm is when you want them it is it is low maintenance and it will be cheaper to operate whereas the asm method is a lot of met, a lot of steps a lot of tons so therefore it has a higher cost to operate that particular method so we're moving on to another um, um, waste disposal method, which is the pit latrine. Not everyone may have heard of this, but this was like a long time kind of um, toilet. Um, some people still uses it, uh, especially in poorer country. Um, these are the preferred, no, not, not because they don't have the countries are, that are poor, remember, they don't have that pipe system, they don't have sewers, they don't have any kind of sewage treatment companies. So they have to rely on a kind of man-made simple structure to get rid of the waste. So pet latrines take away their waste using basically, they make a hole into the ground, they dig a very large hole, and that is where the urine and the feces will be disposed. All right. Now, certain things you have to bear in mind when you're building this um, structure is it has it have to be a good distance away from any water source because you don't want any contamination to, to occur because you could have spread of diseases. Who could name two diseases that are spread by contaminated water? Coronavirus. All right, all right. Uh, that's that the only disease all you know right now. Um, typhoid. Typhoid. No, I don't say that. Cholera as well. Very good. All right. Obviously, you cannot go and dig this hole uphill from any water body because when rain falls, all that waste will actually um, run off from the hill. You call that surface runoff. Also, you, you obviously don't want to build any pit latrine too close to your home or any establishment because those things tend to have a, foul, a kind of foul stench, no matter what you do. And lastly, it should be deep enough to last a few years. I saw Emily said about 15 feet, that's a good um, depth. So it could last a good number of years, all right? Now, when it is eventually filled, you have to cover it. You have to put some soil over it and cover that opening for at least six months. And then you could even use that land for growing crops because the soil itself will be enriched. Um, pepper plants tend to grow very well in next um, pit latrines and sewers. Yeah, um, cesspits and stuff. I don't know if you all ever noticed that. Also, you need to keep a cover to keep all the pests and insects. So some people is actually put like a toilet bowl over the hole. They kind of cast, cast a kind of um, seat using concrete and they put a toilet bowl over just to make it easier for them to use. They could sit comfortably and not fall into the hole. Um, also, they have to put concrete in the actual hole, the bottom of it as well as these sides. I will show you all a picture. That's because soil could erode, soil could break up, soil could move around, so you don't want it caving in. And the actual flooring in the pit latrine should have a slope so that when rain, any liquid or any rain that enters that um, setup, it will not um, flow. It will not remain in the room. It will actually flow down the slope which is directed to the same hole where the urine and feces will enter lastly ventilation pipes should be installed because you know gas is going to be passed right and you don't want that to be um, trapped in that little room nor do you want flies to come in as well so that pipe will basically take the gas and um, release it out so let's get the picture of the um Pit latrine. So here we have a little, well, somebody actually using it. 
right? So let me go through the paths. Right, so this, this person have two side by side. I guess this first one is not in use because it was filled. So they build one right next to it. Obviously they filled it, they covered the hole. Huh? Now notice these gray um, structures are the concrete casting that it did in the size of the hole as well as the base of the hole. So the soil itself will not cave in. And there's a the ventilation pipe that I was talking about here. That will all the gases that is trapped in the hole will flow out into these vent ventilation pipes and be released into the air. Now, obviously, you're going to have a little screen on top of the pipe because they don't want any flies getting trapped here. So that will prevent flies from getting into the pipe. And uh, what else? We have the, well, you know, it have a door, obviously, to keep it closed for privacy reason, to keep the smell inside, to prevent rodents, insects from getting in. What else do you have? Um, well, this person don't have a toilet, in, the toilet seat installed, but it's recommended that you put like a kind of cover over it when not in use. All right. Very handy dandy. All right, any questions with the pit latrine? Everybody good, all right, everybody quiet. Landfills, no, landfills is basically a dumping site, all right? We have three landfills or three dump sites when I say dump site, I don't mean inside a street or, or any corner, any road or anything. It means a large area of land that is used for disposing mostly like solid waste. So can you all think of three landfill sites that we have in Trinidad and Tobago? Betum, that's one. The um the landfill in um Tortuga. You mean Clarkson Bay? Yeah. Yes. yes. There's one right there. One more. People in the east might know. All right. So the last one. Yes. And it's in Guanapo and Arima. All right. So these garbage trucks will take that waste that they collect from the house, the households, as well as the um, um, companies. Now, a lot of companies have their own um, garbage waste collectors. Huh? The company that um, Trinidad uses is Swim Call. And there are a lot of private ones as well. So sometimes when you see a garbage truck passing and they pass your house straight, that means it's not the government one. It, it's... um. Maybe like a private truck. All right, so first to begin, it have a lot of steps in the solid waste disposal. Let's go through what the landfill involves. So the, land, the landfill is a large area of land used to dispose waste material by placing it in the ground and eventually burying it beneath the soil. It involves piling the rubbish in heaps and compacting it. So they're going to use these large tractors, excavators, and flatten out the waste. Because if you flatten it, you have more space for more waste. Now when the site is full, the rubbish is eventually covered with soil. So you have to bury it. And eventually the site can be used. All right. Most likely this one is not um in this last point, we don't do that in Trinidad and Tobago. Also, I don't even think we even bury it. I think they just dump on, dump it on, dump it. So you have heaps and heaps of garbage. Hence the reason why I have a whole set of cobos and rat and scavengers and all kind of people um, climbing in the um, landfill sites. So this is how it's supposed to look, right? Unfortunately, I don't think Beatum and Claxon Bay and them just do this kind of thing. So what you have to have is a large area of land firstly. You need to have 
spikes installed in the soil itself because there's a lot of gas that is being released when these waste is being decomposed in the soil. The gas that is being released, re released the gas that is being released is called methane. All right? Now, methane can be actually collected. So you see in this pipeline going up, it have the methane, and that methane is being transferred to a factory, and they could actually use that gas as something called biofuel. So it can be used in certain vehicles. It can be used as a substitute of um, fossil fuels, which the world uses right now, most countries. All right. So this dark area here is your compacted waste. Notice that it is buried. Compacted means that it flattened. And below the waste, you have a lot of um, lining. It's not just, it just threw it. It is buried and you're and you going away. No. You have to have something called a waterproof liner, which is this blue line that is going to prevent any little seepage or any fluids from the waste from seeping through and entering your groundwater. Because we need groundwater as well. Now, the waste, is, the waste water from the um, compacted waste will actually flow into something called a leach-shaped pipe. So you see these pipes here? That will actually allow the waste from the wastewater from the compacted waste to flow out. And this will be taken into a storage tank. And that, that could also be taken into your, um, your sewage treatment. So this could be used to treat and purify into clean water once again. Now notice the soil itself. The soil is a combination of sand, that is the lighter brown. You also have um, clay at the base. Now sand has a lot of air spaces that will allow water to flow through the little holes. Clay, however, is a little um, thicker. There's not, there's not, there's no air spaces. So therefore, this is like going to prevent any um, leachate water or any dirty water from entering your groundwater. So you have to have your little protective and preventative measures in place. You can't just throw us at our garbage in the soil and leave it there to pile up because all the little water from it will drain and contaminate your water. So these are the little preventative measures they have, right? So is the waterproof liner, that's the blue one, that's the synthetic liner. You must have sand, you must have clay. And you have subsoil. So clay is this dark red one and subsoil is at the bottom. So it's about four different layers that is going to protect and prevent the water and the microorganisms and the impurities from the waste from entering the groundwater. All right? And over time, this compacted waste will decompose, you know, over a number of years. So, all right. So just a little activity to make sure you all are awake and um, with me. You all are going to label the following structures found in the landfill one to five. So if you want, unmute your mic, say, say whatever um, structure. You could identify or use the chat. Number five. Number five is the tractor. Number five is tractor. Very good. So that will use to compact the waste. That will also use to pile it up. And number is four is the compacted waste. Four is the compacted waste. Very good. Sandra is universal paying attention and I have 20 people. Let me see. Um, Reagan, what is number three? Mm. 
that is that no notice number three points a metal or something that is actually sticking out that is basically the leachate pipes so you see this structure that sticks out like that that is going to take the water that is in the um compacted solid waste and keep it into a tank to store so number three is leachate pipes number four where well, we don't do four that is the compacted waste number five the tractor number one is the subsoil so that is the soil right at the bottom here subsoil number two is clay you all got that yeah miss, yeah, miss. very good okay so now we have domestic waste disposal as well this type of waste disposal is managed by the government or any kind of um, authority that is um, hired by the government so the domestic waste disposal include you could use you could actually have compost heaps um, the use of composting toilets in place of total waste water collection and the minimal treatment of gray water before disposal to the soil so basically you could collect the the water you could now this first one is basically talking about the pit latrine here all right and any kind of organic waste like vegetable peels onion skin garlic skin all them kind of things watermelon seeds all of those things you can make a compost heap in the back of your house you don't have to throw that into bins um the use of conventional septic tank offering primary treatment to all wastewater and disposal of effluent to subsoil disposal many homes i guess every home have a cesspit or a septic tank that is actually store your domestic sewage and when it is filled you all will call the um i think a swim call i'm not sure they will come and clean your cesspit, cesspit tanks obviously when it is filled it is not because it is actually smell it now that will store waste for a uh, number of years eh? the use of an aerated wastewater treatment system followed by surface disposal of a pre-chlorinated effluent um well this will be the water treatment first you have your sewage treatment and then you actually treat that water now and make it safe to drink incineration means burning the waste now you can't you cannot pile up your garbage at the back of your house and burn it that is actually illegal because you're polluting the environment with that smoke it releases a lot of harmful gas into the air what you have to do is you have to sort out your garbage so recyclable materials like plastic glass styrofoam all of all of those should not be burned because it releases harmful gases however the other solid waste um you can't place it into a large oven no, i guess not no one may have that some people may have like a oven or an incinerator that is designated to burn the garbage and there are some companies that do this a lot of the medical waste from hospitals and so forth are incinerated all right now reclamation means you're reclaiming waste so waste that can be reused you, re you claim it and then you can well first to begin you sort and through the waste to see what you could use and whatever is usable or recyclable you keep it instead of getting rid of it all right so some sometimes in them um like in bitum and uh in some landfill sites they actually have like little flea markets and stuff so whatever they found from your waste they actually sell it at a cheaper price don't know if you all ever heard of that okay so now we're moving on to something called biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste 
biodegradable means that it can be broken down in the environment naturally using microorganisms. So that would be like your vegetable peels and fruits, paper, because paper is made from trees, wood. Can you all name any other items that could fall under biodegradable that is not in this slide? So anyone can answer that. Give me about two more things that can be biodegradable. So. Repeat what you said. Soap, like biodegradable soap. Soap, right. So that is more like the um, natural soaps, huh? Yeah. Like coconut, you know them kind of coconut and honey soap. There's big all kind of soap from natural ingredients now. Yeah. Men's waste, like animal waste and stuff. Feces and urine, correct? See. One more, something that you are wearing. Like cloth and stuff? Cloth. Like cloth, cloth for instance, cotton. Not okay. all cloth, not all materials are biodegradable. Cotton is made from trees, so that could be broken down naturally in the environment. But nylon and them kind of other tougher materials may not break down naturally. They could last long. All right, so non-biodegradable is obviously plastic, glass, Steel, like aluminum, um, metals. You have, um, I think you have more non biodegradable waste. That is why you actually have a whole island form from non biodegradable waste. Don't know if you all ever heard of this island called Plastic Island. Let me see if I can get a picture. So, People who like to go in the beach and, and just throw the garbage or in the river, seas and stuff, all of those congregate. Yes, I showed you all last week. Oh gosh. So let me just show it again. So you see all them plastic bottles, all of the all of those waste form a little island in the ocean itself. And that is still a lot of marine animals, huh? And it lasts thousands, even millions of years. So that's why they have a lot of beach cleanups. And you'll notice, because of the little lockdown that we have, um, a lot of people are home right now. The beaches and stuff is actually cleaner. The rivers, the water turn back clear. I think in Venice, it's clearer now. Cora, they say in Cora River, it gets clear and clean. So that's a good thing. Last thing is the three R's, which everyone should practice. This include recycle, reduce, and reuse. The term recycle means using the material that have been used to make something else. So when you buy a, a bottle, like for instance, a Coca-Cola bottle, the one liter, after you consume the primary reason, which is the, you use the bottle, but what what it what its purpose was for, then now after that you could actually convert it into a next a next product which you could use. So I've seen a lot of people bore holes and they cut it and they use it as plant pots. Reduce means the more we recycle, the fewer landfill sites or incinerators we need, reducing the the amount of products as a whole can reduce the amount of waste. So that is why Massey stores and all of those groceries took the initiative to reduce plastic in particular by charging people for the bag so that will kind of prevent people from buying it in the first place. And they also have that recyclable bag which you could keep reusing over and over. And well reuse means some items can be used over and over like plastic bottles. A lot of people save the, the water bottle, for instance, and they use the normal tap water and keep it firm. Keep
keep it as a personal water bottle. Can you all give me some examples of these three which you all, you all have actually practiced? Uh, reuse. Reuse, okay. Like what? Like glass bottles. All right, so you put items inside it? So. Very good. We I use, use all of them. the big water bottles, like the big two liter water bottles and Coke bottles to put water. Right, it's, it's very important to have water stored in the house. In case, you know, it, besides a tank, you want to have water in case, like, like what's happening, like if the world ends or something, at least you have water reused, um, stored in a bottle that you reuse. Um, what about recycle? What's something that you'll actually change up? Well, Miss, in like primary school, I had to make a card or a bottle. So I guess that's what's like. You made a Wait, card? A car. Like, you know, you get the covers and you like make that the wheels. Oh, okay, okay, yes. So you build something using like, um, what exactly. material, the plastic and stuff? Yeah. Uh, I made nice. a mini grill out of a cook can. Really nice, okay. Let me you think of something. You use dries and stuff. Right. I think I use like a Clorox. Not Clorox. Um, what is it, boy? What is used to wash with? Squeezy. Yeah, I actually use the, co the top cover and place it into our next bottle to dispense liquid soap. All right. So this brings us to the end of um, the impact of health practices on the environment. I already sent this slide for you all. And I also sent the um, concise notes, which is, let me get that. So if you notice, you would have seen I just clear my charts often. All right. So you would have seen this posted. The shorter form of the notes posted as well as the questions to the notes. So your homework now, let's go through the homework. We will go through a few questions and we'll take a break. The homework was question 14 and 16 in the impact of health practices on the environment. So let's pull up those questions. Get your past papers out, get your um, answers out in the interim. So question what, 14. Oh, 14 and 6. All right, so let's see. There's 14. 14. Okay, this 14 and 6. Okay. 14, part A. Define the terms pollution and pollutants. Who wants to do it? Miss, I feel like I can give it a try, but I feel like it's going to be wrong. Well, you never know until you try. Well, I have the answer for the first one. Okay, go ahead, Sanjay. Go ahead with pollution then. The presence of harmful substances on the, I mean, in the environment. The presence of harmful substances on the environment. Okay. Pollutant. Go ahead, Bala. Pollutants, those are the things that are polluting the environment. So like things that aren't biodegradable. Right. So 
that is the actual products that can be found in the environment like plastic, glass, styrofoam. It could even be gas. It don't have to just be solids. It could be like a harmful gas, like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, or it could be harmful chemicals like acids and so forth. Okay, well, I give, I just gave three examples of atmospheric pollution, pollutant. So that will be gases. So nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, all of those are examples. Does carbon dioxide like fall into that? Carbon dioxide at high levels is very damaging to the environment. Yes. All right. C. Explain the treatment procedure that should be carried out on river water to make it safe for human consumption. So what are the steps? This is, this is like a long one. I hear from Shalanda, I hear from Samaya, I hear from Sophia, I hear from Tristan, Regan, Mamadou, Huda, Jabari, Charles, I, I have not heard from you all in a very long time. I don't know if I'll give up, if I'll um, finish school or graduate. I don't know. So please tell me what is the treatment procedure that should be carried out on river water to make it safe for human consumption? Anyone, any of the names that I called? Uh, goodness, um, isn't um, co coagulation, alteration, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection? Very good. Say it slower for the class to hear. Coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, disinfection. Very good. Now, for each treatment process that you call out for 10 marks, you have to give out a description of each. So let me just go back to that slide. Right, so here it is. Water purification, also known as water treatment. All right, so coagulation is the addition of sticky substance which adheres to the debris and sediments in the water. Flocculation is the gentle, gentle stirring or agitation to encourage the particles to form into large masses to be settled or filtered easily. Sedimentation is the process of settling or traveling to the bottom of, the, of a tank. Filtration is the removal of sediments, particles, and debris by using porous materials. And lastly, disinfection is the addition of chlorine or bleach to kill any remaining organism. Also, there's add fluorine to prevent your enamel in your teeth from eroding. All right. Well, a lot of people don't even drink tap, tap water. There is by bottled water. So they don't have to worry about that. So rewrite it, see it over in your head about 10 times so that it can stick. Next part, D, discuss the role of microorganisms in the treatment of sewage. So why do we need microorganisms? To reduce the volume of sludge and produce methane gas from it. Yes, you can reduce. So using microorganism is actually reduce the amount of buildup of waste. And also, it produces methane gas. But methane is mostly from the landfills and not really sewage. So I wouldn't take methane gas from it. So basically what microorganisms do is they break down any organic waste. So that would have been the urine, feces, um, vegetable peels, 
kitchen waste basically. Let's move on to question six. Six party. Nisha tells her brother Nial the amount of water on earth remains constant with the assistance of plants and that the water cycle illustrates how this is so. Figure two represents the water cycle. Who wants to do A to E? Uh, I think I could call it out. Sure. Condensation. Oh wait, is Sophia said A is evaporation already. Okay, yeah. So A is evaporation. Okay, yeah. B. A is evaporation, B is, you see animals releasing something. Now animals, humans, plants, respire. When we respire, we are releasing water vapor into the atmosphere. Our breath contains water vapor. So B is respiration, I will help you all out there. C is transpiration. Thank you, Sophia. Is D precipitation? D is, now D is basically more to the clouds. Huh? D is more condensation. If they put the, um, if they put it close to the droplets, then you will say precipitation. So, Okay. It's condensation. C, right, we don't do C, um, transpiration. E is percolation. Or collection, yeah. Percolation or collection, I will accept those two. Because the water is collected or the water passing through the soil. Next part. Groundwater must be purified before it is safe for drinking. Name two methods used in the home for purifying water. Right, Sophia said by boiling water. Charles, say something now. Putting it in the sun, yeah, you could put your... Now, if you pour water into a plastic bottle and you leave it, for about four to six hours in the direct sunlight, that could also kill microorganisms. If you're applying bleach to it, Raphael, you need to dilute it. Huh? Just remember that. Chlorine tablets. I don't know why. Where you have that liquid iodine to purify water? We also saw that. Any notes? All right, no problem. Well, if that's a method, no problem. Mostly chlorine and, and boiling and those things are more effective. Using a water filter. Yes, you can install filter systems into your pipes or use the drug. Most people got that. Number B, part two. What is the function of screening in the water treatment plant? So why do you screen the sewage? It's to get rid of like all the big stuff inside the water, like that's vegetables. Yeah. You screen it to get rid of large objects such as vegetables, it could be animals, like it could be a fish or rat. Um, it could be a shoe, whatever people just get rid of in their toilets. Um, even in um, bathrooms and so forth. See? Nial has a sample of water which he thinks has bacteria. How can he demonstrate the presence of bacteria in the water? Um, Sophia also mentioned that the function of screening water is to remove solid waste that could cause damage to the other processes. Yes, um, a function of screening is to prevent the clogs from clogging up the, the pumps and the pipes from being clogged. So how can you demonstrate the presence of bacteria in the water? 
How do you test the water? That is what you have to say. Yeah, to summarize the test. So WASA have them chemical labs that is test water as well. So this will be this note here. Testing water for bacteria. You summarize this in one sentence. Don't need to tell you all how to summarize. All right, so let's go for a little break. Um, now is what time? 2.15, we will re return the class. I'm leaving this, by the way, up. Um, I'm going to leave it on the next question that I want you all to do. But we're taking 15 minutes break, okay? So I would I will repeat what I just did. We are putting A on the cover where the toilet seat may be situated. That will cover the hole. B is the squatting plate, so that will be the actual toilet seating. C is the concrete base that is below. D is the pit, that is the actual hole. And then E is the concrete lining, which is the sides of the hole. So there we go. A, B, C, D, E. All right, so moving on to part B now. Which pit latrine KOL provides a better way of disposing feces and urine? Give reasons for your answer. Which one? L, as it is deeper, very good. And it's deeper because it could store large amounts of waste. You had to actually say that part. Well, everybody should have uh, at least know the answer is L here. So why is L better to provide better? Is a better way of disposing feces and urine besides L being deeper. There's another reason. Cricket, cricket, crickets. I could, I could actually hear somebody dog barking. Nobody know? It has a mesh to keep the bugs out, right? The mesh is right above here. So that will prevent flies from entering pests. And notice you have concrete at the base, at the um, flooring, at the sides. So that will prevent the pit walls from caving in. All right? Moving on. Part C, explain why the location of a pit latrine is important. Waiting for somebody to answer that. Or let me select someone. I didn't hear from um, Sorrento, Christian, Alicia Maloney, Alicia Alfaro. One of you all could answer that one. Why the location of the pit latrine is important. The longer you all take to answer, the longer we stay on this particular question. Hmm. My God. All right, moving on. Part D, since nobody can answer that. Give reasons why disinfectants should or should not be used in pit latrines. Okay, let me read Emily's answer. It must be away from any water pipelines as it can flood the latrine as well as it may give off a bad smell so it must be far away from your home. Yeah. That's correct. You need to build it far away from your home or any settlements. Because of the stench, 
and you don't want it polluting your water lines. D, give reasons why disinfectants should or should not be used in fit latrines. First to begin, should you use disinfectant in the um, fit latrine? Sophia said disinfectant should not be used because it have no liquids to gush or flush down anything. Nope. You could throw it on the hole, you know. You could just stand above the hole and just throw it down. So first to begin, should you use it or should you not use it? That's what I want to know first, first the start of this question. Miss, we're still on uh, C, right? No, we just finished that. We're actually on D. And, and you're asking if we should use disinfectants or not? Yeah. Y yeah, we should. Why? Because in the... The diagram that you showed us, it was saying that they put disinfectants in it to get rid of the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So you're trying yeah. to tell me that they put, they oh, put no. disinfectants oh. there? Never mind. No, no, no. You can't put disinfectants there. So no, you should not put disinfectants because... I was talking about the wrong one. I was talking about sewage by accident. All right. Now, why should we not put disinfectant here? Nobody. Now you cannot. Okay, Emily said it. Oh, Rafa, I'm not seeing some answers. Raphael said no because it prevents the breaking down of nutrients for the soil. Breaking down of nutrients. Okay, yeah, it prevents the. It prevents microorganisms from breaking down the organic waste, which will provide nutrients for the soil. It should not be, Emily said it should not be used as it is not biodegradable and disturbs the earth. All right, so basically, if you use disinfectants here, that will kill microorganisms in the feces and urine. Now you need microorganisms to break down the feces and the urine so that the nutrients from it can be returned to the soil. And also, so it will not be accumulating and piling up. So you need microorganisms in that aspect. Next question. So you have to label this um, sewage treatment A to C. So we're doing A to C right now. Make sure they're writing down all your answers. Because eh? some people just like, I don't know. They feel like it's the end of the world. Let me just remind you all that after every pandemic, the world is returned to normal. Like businesses will just start back, school will start back, everything will start back. So if you want to be left behind, that is your problem. Because this is not the first time the world um face something like this. So exams like CXC could have just cancel the exam, but they continue in the exams. And HSB have paper too still. So just like what we was preparing for, you have more extra time to prepare for your exam. So you have no excuse. Nobody knows A to C. Go through this slide where I have the um, activated sludge method. 
that are booleans, isn't it? A great chamber. Now A points something called a sieve, which is like a screen. So that is screening. A is screening. So we got the answer for A screening. B. Let me go back to that note. So A, that screen end, that is like the sieve that they pointed out there. B, first settle, settling tank. B is commutator. Commutator means that they're rolling it. However, if you notice, that have nothing to do with settlement, like everything settling. The settling part is the clarifiers. So that one, since it's first settling tank, that is the primary clarifier. B is primary clarifier. So go ahead and do C. C is aeration tank. All right, so let's go back to the handout. Aeration is when you apply the bacteria. Now this one not showing anything like a filtering kind of um, system. This one showing like a filter, a fil filtering tank. This come like the biological filter tank here. So they have a, now, like I said, they could use the activated sludge method with the um, biological filter tank. So C would have been the biological filter tank because it have a filter bed. So they join up the two um, treatment systems there. All right, so moving on. B, explain what is a disinfectant. Who could tell me what is a disinfectant? And give an example. Disinfectant is a chemical liquid that destroys bacteria. You could say it destroys microorganisms, not just bacteria. So it, it includes viruses, fungi. And bear in mind. A disinfectant, like the one you just put to wash clothes, that stuff, it is kill like germs and bacteria. And microorganisms. Right, so disinfectants are used on surfaces, not on human skin or um, living things. You use disinfectants in flooring, clothing, tabletops, tile, a tile wall, those kind of things. Two, the public health authorities want to spray a landfill with a disinfectant. Explain why this is not advisable. So this one's similar, but it's not the same question. Eh? This one is similar to the one that we did already with the pit latrine. But this one is a little different. Why would you not want to spray a landfill with a disinfectant? Because you could kill the stuff that live with inside there. Eh? All right, so like, you can't you could say kill, it like that, um, but just to strengthen your, your answer, all right? You could it kill um, organisms living in the area and Right, animals. so you can kill plants and animals because these disinfectants have chemicals which are actually poisonous and harmful to living things. And will harm the environment even more. Yeah. 
and also it could leach and it could reach the groundwater and eventually pollute your water supplies. So you should not spray landfills with a disinfectant. Next question, C. In recent years, plastic have been creating a major problem for landfills. Describe the problem of plastics in landfills. So any problem land, um, plastic this cause. It's not biodegradable, so it can be absorbed by the earth. Maybe it's taking up too much space. Okay, so it's accumulating in the land. It takes very long Compose. to break down. And that could actually cause an ice or, or unpleasant site to form in the landfill. Which could even cause rodents and animals, pests, to come and live in it. Which could cause spread of diseases. So I actually call out like our five points in one sentence there. Part two, how is the problem describing C above being addressed? So how are they addressing the plas plastics in landfill? They are recycling the plastic. Recycling, very good. they are reusing the plastic as well. So you could say three hours here. You could even say that there are bins designated for disposing only plastic, which is collected and then returned to recycling companies. Right, so we don't do 14. We don't do six. Number 12. Describe how our landfill is made. So how you does make a landfill? Let me go to that note. How do you build that? What is the parts of the landfill? What do you need in order to have a landfill? The private area. All right, so you need a, like a private area or an area that is solely to be used for dumping of, of waste. So you have to say a regulated large area of flat land, soil, and the soil must contain subsoil, clay, sand. What else needs to be installed? Crushers to break up the soil. Why want to break up the soil for Sophia? I don't I don't see the need to break up soil. You need leachate collection. So you need to install leachate pipes to collect the little water from the waste. The clay barriers, very good, to prevent soil and water contamination. You need tractors to daily flatten and, and compact the waste. Also to bury it. All right, so those are the points that you need to talk about. Part two. Sorting is one activity that is performed in treating with solid waste at a landfill. Name two other activities. So before the waste is um, being dumped into the landfill, they have to sort through the waste. So when those trucks arrive at the landfill site, you have authorities, you have people in charge of going through the waste, all those garbage bags, putting them into plastics, glass, 
um, styrofoam, cloth, things that could be reused, furniture, or all kind of um, groups they have. What is some other, what is two other things you think, um, two other activities that is performed in treating with solid waste? Splitting and bowling. So explain splitting and bowling. What exactly is splitting and bowling? Okay, the person slowly um, disappeared. So when you sort it, and the, the next thing to do is you need to have now certain items can be reclaimed. Reclaim means that people can come and claim that waste and use and reuse it so they could take it. Like it have things like microwave. Um, television set, all kind of things people come and reclaim because they know how to fix it and, and use it over. So there are certain people who, so sorting is one activity. Reclaiming is another activity. And thirdly, something else, what, what, do, you, what do you all think? You can just simply say, Returning the recyclable materials to a recycling factory. You carry the recyclables to a recycling company. Right? Okay, moving on. B. B part one. Community Y has an effective solid waste management program. Labeled bins are provided for the collection of household refuse, glass, wood, and metal products. Community Y also uses methods of incineration, recycling, and composting to manage its solid waste. Explain the processes of incineration, recycling, and composting. Who wants to do incineration? What does incineration involve? The destruction of waste material. Using what? Well, burning it. Right, so it involves burning waste materials in a large type of oven called an incinerator. Obviously, non flammable items should not be burnt. I'm sorry, flammable items should not be burned, which is like alcohol. Um, what is flammable materials? Besides alcohol. Um, like fibers. Fiber, glass, foil. Wood, those things are flammable, meaning it can be e easily caught. All right. What about recycling? That one easy. What recycling involves? Converting waste materials into new materials and objects that can be used again. Correct. Last one, composting. What's composting solid waste? Letter in biodegradable materials break down. All right, so you basically designate an area where you will collect your biodegradable materials into a heap. You call it a compost heap. 
Let me show you all. So plenty of people with little backyards and little gardens. They could actually have like a, a they barricade a little area and they keep throwing their vegetable peels and so forth in it and they sprinkle water in it. Or you just throw it directly to the soil. Like this one here. All right, so I think, let's see what other question we have. One advantage of using each process. So what's the advantage of burning the waste? What is one advantage of using incineration? Less space is being used, right? You prevent the accumulation of waste. What about recycle? All right, so if you recycle, you'll have less waste being dumped in the first place. And composting? Composting means you reuse waste. Well, you basically adding nutrients to the soil so you can use it for agriculture there. Last one, Patsy. Community-wide is concerned about pollution. Explain how community-wide can prevent water pollution. Your answer should include three methods. So anyone? What is three methods in which you can prevent water pollution? Clean drains, don't flush large objects down the toilet or sink. Yeah. Miss, the government could like input other ways for us to dispose of our waste so that people won't be like dumping it in water and stuff. All right, so they could designate like certain bins. Certain, yeah, you can have like on the streets bins in place so people when they're straight on the road, they can have um community cleanup. Well, it have CPEP, all of, all of those. All right, so that is the end of the past papers. Let's move on to the presentations. So the first group that I will, um well, one of the groups, Um, they already sent me the All right. So we have HIV or AIDS here. This is a brochure. So I'm going to play the actual presentation part, which was sent to me previously. So let me um organize that voice note for you all. The other groups, well, do you all have mics, so you all just speak directly. 
So this one is um, Kashida and Raphael. So listen up, listen to what they have to say. Regan, I, like I said, you have to resend it to me because I already delete that. I, I would not have kept that chat open for, for so long. I just always clean up my um, WhatsApp. I don't ever keep messages for long. Right, this is Group 6. Today we will be speaking about HIV and AIDS. Well, I'll be starting off with what is HIV and AIDS. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is AIDS, is a chronic, potential, life-treating condition caused by the human immunodeficiency virus. HIV, by damaging your immune system. HIV interferes with your body's ability to fight the organisms that cause disease. HIV is a sexually transmitted infection. How is it caused? HIV infection is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus. You can get HIV from contact with infected blood, semen, or vaginal fluid. Most people get the virus by having unprotected sex with someone who has HIV. Another common way of getting it is by sharing drug needles with someone who is infected with HIV. How does HIV become AIDS? HIV destroys CD4 T cells, which is white blood cells that play a large role in helping your body fight disease. The fewer CD4 T cells you have, the weaker your immune system becomes. You can have an HIV infection with few or no symptoms for years before it turns into AIDS. Signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms of HIV and AIDS vary depending on the phase of the infection. The first phase, phase sorry, which is called primary infection, also known as acute HIV. Some people infected by HIV develop a flu-like illness within two to four weeks after the virus enters the body. The illness known as primary acute HIV infection may last for a few weeks. Possible signs and symptoms include muscle aches, joint pain, rash, rash, sore throat, painful mouth sores, diarrhea, weight loss, night sweats and chills. Clinical latent infection, also known as chronic HIV. In this stage of infection, HIV is still present in the body and in white blood cells. However, many people may not have any symptoms or infection during this stage, during this time, sorry. This stage can last for many years. If you're not receiving ERT, also known as antiretroviral therapy, HIV today don't develop AIDS. Untreated HIV typically turns into AIDS in about eight to 10 years. But thanks to better antiviral treatment, most people with HIV today don't develop AIDS. When AIDS, AIDS occurs, your immune system has severely damaged. You'll be more likely to develop opportunistic cancers and diseases that wouldn't usually cause illness in a person with a healthy immune system. Signs and symptoms of AIDS may include chronic diarrhea, total limb glands, persistent white spots or unusual lesions on your tongue or in your mouth, persistent unexplained fatigue. Now I'm going to be speaking about the prevention methods. Prevention methods may include using new condoms every time you have sex. Use treatment as prevention, which refers to taking HIV medication to prevent the sexually transmission of HIV, which is one of the most highly effective methods, etc. Now, Raphael will be speaking about treatment control statistics. Good 
Okay, thanks a lot, Group 6. I like the layout. However, then here, one of your group members. I only hear two people from your group, which is, I don't know why. Um, also, it should have be split evenly between the two people who presented. Um, because I heard mostly from um, Kashida. All right. Next group, let me do Reagan. So Reagan's group is group five, which is diabetes. All right, so diabetes is on the screen here. Now, one thing I have to point out is this color scheme that you choose because you can barely see the purple. Huh? You can't have purple font on the background as a, a dark purple. It will not stand out. So I don't think this is um, good visually. The font is very small as well. All right, so let me play the audio. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not getting the audio here. I'm not sure why. Maybe I should refresh the page. Still not getting audio. All right, I'll have to play it from my phone directly. So let me bring up my phone. Hi, I'm Megan, and I'm Alicia, and we do diabetes. Why, what's diabetes? Diabetes is a disease that happens when your blood sugar is too high and you don't have enough insulin to regulate it. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes is a chronic disease. It happens when your pancreas produces a low or no insulin. You're born with type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a form of the disease that you can develop over time. It happens when your blood sugar has been consistently high due to a poor diet. The pancreas gets overwhelmed trying to produce enough insulin and eventually stops producing insulin required to regulate your blood sugar. Some symptoms of diabetes are in case of thirst, weight loss, blurry vision, small hearing sores, sores, sorry. Skin infections and 
viral infection, some treatments for type 1 diabetes, in short, short neophytes and healthy diabetes, and increasing regular treatment and control for type 2 diabetes and medicines prescribed by a doctor, maintaining a healthy diet and exercise regularly. Okay, I guess that's it for this group. Now, like I said, you have to talk fluently and with some confidence. This group talking like that, they ain't sure what they're even saying and they can't even pronounce the words. The other groups which presented already, which is Tristan, Emily, Kashida, Raphael, they actually spoke loud, clear. They know what they were saying. So this group needs a... Um, one, the color that you all chose is hard on the eyes. Two, you can barely hear what you all are saying and you all songing as though you don't even know what you're saying. All right, next group. Um, so I have to change, I have to update this list. So let's go to group one, tuberculosis. But by the way, I didn't even receive that brochure up to now, eh? Do you all have the brochure? If you have the brochure, send me it because I don't know how else um, the other students will see it. I have to send you all it. Um, like I said, I spoke to Saravana and she told me that she sent me, but I have never received it. I checked my junk, I checked, I searched her emails so far, I haven't gotten anything. So you have to resend it. Giving you all by the end of today to send that to me. You can send it directly to my WhatsApp if you don't know how to use the email. All right, the next group. So we're done here. This group um, disqualified. Let's hear from uh, malaria and dengue. Malaria and dengue. Let's see who's online. If they don't present today, they are disqualified. None of these members are present in today's class. Very disappointing. Nathan, Dominique, Hannah were absent. Group four already present. Group five already present. Present. They. Group seven disqualified. Group eight disqualified. Group nine disqualified. Group 10, I actually saw Jabari online. So Jabari is here. Alicia Alfaro is here. Sorrenta is, was here. So he has clearly seen who leaving, who staying on the chat. Okay, I'm seeing Sorrenta, very good. So all of group 10 is present. So we are waiting for you all to unmute your mic. Let me get your brochure and you let me know when you're ready to start. I'm going to unmute your mics. So Sorrenta, Jabari, unmute, and Alicia Alfaro. I hope all you know how the time and who's saying what first. Good day, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Sorrenta Wright. A little louder, please. My name is Sorrenta Wright. Me hearing you. And today we are going to talk about leptospirosis and gastroenteritis. What is leptospirosis? It is an infectious disease caused by the bacteria known as leptospiro, especially a common in tropical areas such as Caribbean countries because the bacteria thrives 
in warm and moist condition. The risk of leptospirosis in an eye is an eye in flood situation, situation such as after an hurricane or every seasonal rain. How is that paralysis is transmitted? Um, that is transmitted through the urine of infected animals that enters the water or soil and survives for, for months. Transmitted by rodents, commonly dogs, farm animals, and horses. Animals and humans become infected by direct contact by drinking or inhaling the infected urine or water contaminated by urine. Can be transmitted to humans through cuts and abrasions of the skin or through the mucous membranes of the eyes, nose, noses and mouth. What are the symptoms? Some infected persons may not show. Louder, please. What are the symptoms? Some infected persons may not show any symptoms of the disease. However, others can show symptoms ranging from mild to severe. Sometimes it can even be fatal. The mild form of manifest as a flu-like illness with the following symptoms. Fever and chills, severe headaches, muscle aches, nausea and vomiting, jaundice, jaundice, ab jaundice abnormal pain. That's it? Who is at risk? The greatest risk is possessed to persons in those who contact with animals or persons. Exposed to contaminated water, mud, soil, and vegetation, such as farmers, Livestock and crops, veterinarians, animal caretakers, owners, beta workers, and meat handlers, sewage and utility workers. Those involved in the huh? utility. utility workers, those involved in. Outdoor freshwater activities, for example, activities, fishing. activities, for example, fishing, camping, swimming in stagnant rivers, stagnant, stagnant, and kayaking. Can leptospirosis be cured? Yes, it is a curable with early detection and treatment with prescript antibiotic. Prescribe. Prescribe antibiotic. You all finished? No. Gastroenteritis, when you have a diarrhea and a vomiting, you may say you have the stomach flu it is called a gastroenteritis, although it may make you feel bad. It, 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 it's an illness that has nothing to do really with flu. In gastro, gastroenteritis, your stomach and intestines are ir, ir, irritated and inflamed. The cause is tropically 
a viral or a bacteria infection. Symptoms of gastroenteritis with gastro gastroenteritis. The main symptoms you probably have are watery diarrhea and vomiting. You might also have some pain, cramping, um, cramping, fever, nausea, and a headache. Because of diarrhea and vomiting, you will also can become dire, di dehydrated. Watch for signs of that dehydrated, such as dry skin and dry mouth, feeling like headed and being really thirsty. Call your doctor if you have any of these. Stomach flu and children. Children can be get dehydrated quickly. So if your child has the stomach flu, it's important that you look for signs that he is very thirsty or has dry skin or a dry mouth. If you have a baby, look look for fewer drier diapers. Keep children with gas out of the care or school until all symptoms are gone. Check with your doctor before giving your child any medicine, drugs used to control diarrhea and vomiting, aren't usually given to ch children younger than five. To help prevent rotavirus, the most common cause of stomach flu for children, there are two vaccines that can be given to infants. Talk to your do doctor about the vaccines. What causes gastroenteritis? Enteritis. Um, gastroenteritis. Is contained gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis contained food or water. Contaminated. Um, contaminated food or water, and a contact with someone who has the virus. Also, unwashed hand, hands after going to the bathroom or changing a diaper. The most common causes of gastroenteritis is a virus. Gastro, gastro. Say it slowly. Gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis can be caused by many different kinds of viruses. These are also other unusual ways to get gastroenteritis. Heavy metals, arsenic, arsenic. Cadmium, feed or mercury in drinking water. Eating a lot of acidic food like citrus, 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 citrus fruit, and tomatoes, toxins that might be food in certain seafood, and medications such as antibiotics, anti. Sides, lack acids, antacids, and acids, and acids, laxatives, and laxatives, that's laxatives, and laxatives, laxatives, and chemography. Drugs. Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy drugs. What are the treatment of gastroenteritis? Fluids. Have lots to drink. Eat as normally as possible. Medication. Thank you, Group 10. Now the information is good. However, I'm sure the others who are listening, you all can go ahead and mute your mics, yeah? The others who are listening, who can tell me what is the major problem with this group? 
I like the information, you know. Very informative and the pictures and everything. Nice layout. But who could tell me what is their downfall? It's too clustered. Well, I was actually going towards the presentation part. Look at how many times I have to sound out words. So therefore, you all did not even practice before you all presented. At least read it through with someone to know that the words you're going to say is words that you know and you can pronounce. Also, I don't know how well you edit it, but if you look at these texts, it's blurry. Yeah? You should not, you shouldn't stretch it. You have to um, use Microsoft Word, go into brochure and type it in. I don't know what you all use, but clearly it, it stretched the um, pictures and it became a little blurry. So if you want to print this and give it to the public, it's not the best quality. And you all actually talk more than 10 minutes. So you had to kind of summarize what you're saying. Go straight to the point. All right, so the, la the last group that I am going to give yet another extension to is um, Sophia's group. You all spoke to me already, and I have given you all an extension already with regards to the brochure. This is the last extension, huh? Because you all keep in back the class. Um, let's do some of the multiple choice questions in the pretest, and we'll end class. So I'm going to the demo test on TXE's website, just so that you all will know how it will be given to you all. So we're going on E, test. You're going to see SEC, HSB, paper one. All right, so question one. Use the chat or unmute your mic for the answers. I'm sorry about that, my brother. I'm sorry about my laptop and my mistake. Okay, no problem. All right. First, the answer is B. Okay, let's read it. All living organisms carry out certain activities which make them different from inanimate objects. Which of the following list shows three activities of living organisms? You all said D. Okay. Yeah, that's one we did already, too. Two, which of the following cell organelles make protein for the cell? B, the ribosome. The initial energy of a food chain comes from A, the sun. The function of nutrifying bacteria is to convert Please put the number you're answering so we don't get confused in the chat. The function of nutrifying bacteria is to convert nitrogen gas to urea. No. Nitrifying converts nitrites to nitrates. B. Or nitrates to nitrites. Night blindness is caused by a deficiency of Vitamin A. Vitamin A. Very good. Which of the following foods would most likely prevent constipation? Tree. 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 You had to select the option A, B, C, or D. B. So you said water and yep, carrot. Where are you? Why not carrot, water, and cabbage? All right, I'm going with C. C is the answer. 
Oh, I was close. Number seven. Which of the following foods, when consumed in excess, do not contribute to obesity? Carbohydrate. I see roughage. Very good, roughage. Which of the following is a def def definitive sign of malnutrition? Overweight, D. D. Very good, overweight. Um, albinism is um, people who have no pigment in the skin. Shiny hair, yeah, that is a good thing. Dwarfism is actually when you don't have a particular hormone called thyroxine. So this one is D. Which of the following formulas use to determine body mass index? Two. B. No, B. C, 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 C. I think it's B. Weight over height squared. Where is that? Okay, well, they have it reversed. So we have I was correct. 10. Refers to the diagram below showing the arrangement of teeth in the upper jaw of adult human being. Which are the following label parts show an incisor? A. One, very good. Which part of the tooth are nerves found? D, the pub cavity. Very good. An enzyme shows optimum activity at pH 2.5. In which part of the alimentary canal will this enzyme be most active? C. C. Stomach. Stomach. And product of digestion of carbohydrate? B. Glucose. Which of the following are adjusted by the human body? Egested, eh? Country. Species is one. Undigested food is one. So one on three. B. The trachea is lined with hair like structures called. Yeah. No, 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 no. Correct. A. Celia. A. Raphael. Who wants to keep reading? Because our next class had to talk for three hours. Which of the following best describes what happens during exhalation? Exhalation. Uh. A. When you yeah. exhale, you breathe out. So the ribcage moves down and in. Diaphragm moves upwards. So it must be upward here. Messy. Read it for them, please. Oh, which of the following statements are true of aerobic respiration? One, produces a large amount of energy. Two, carbon dioxide is always produced. Three, produces lactic acid. The answer is one and two. Oh, no. Okay. Tar is a component of cigarette smoke, which is the most likely effect of tar in the body of cigarette smokers? A reduction of oxygen going to the blood, thank you, and Emily. 19. The blood vessel that takes blood from the heart to the lungs is called the... Anyone? Order? Wait, what's it? From the heart mm -hmm. to the lung. Oh, from the heart to... Okay. 
So it's pulmonary something. Demus pulmonary artery. Correct. Thank you. Come on, 20. Item 20. Item 20 refers to the following diagrams which show structures found in the blood. Which structure is phagocytic in nature? So who's the phagocyte? Yeah. Now one is platelets, two is, that looks like a, that looks like an artery. Three is our white blood cell, so it's between three and four. Three is the answer, C. Good. Zen cuts her finger while peeling an orange. Which of the following components of the blood will assist in reducing bleeding? Blood platelets, thank you. B. Which of the following results in a coronary artery disease? At atherosclerosis, thank you, D. I want our next reader from 23 to 30. Okay. Let me hear from um, Huda Tom, you read off from 23 to 30. The function of the lymphatic system in the human body is to The answer there is supposed to be C, remove excess fluid and foreign material from tissue spaces. Which of the is not a function of a human skeleton? Answer is Produces vitamin D A. Um, the trachea has the sorry the assistant breathing. Don't forget the rib cage is assistant breathing. Eh? Twenty five. Which of the following functions? Which of the following are functions of a cartilage? Functions of cartilage. Forms a barrier between bones, that's correct. Lengthens the space between bones, mm, not really, no. Nah. Reduces friction, yes. Miss one, A, I mean, yeah. I see one and three. Miss one and IV. So okay, one. well, this is also one prevent shock, so one and five. Sorry, yeah. one and four. So the following pairs of bones form a ball and a socket joint. Ball and socket could be by the hip and it could be by the arms. A, female and pelvic yeah. girdle. Yeah. Which of the following pairs of activities occurs when an arm is flexed? Who are you talking inside of a bottle? No. My voice sounds so heavy. Um, I don't know. <laughs> You're sleeping? I was. Shame on you, and that was recorded. So we will play that same part what you said for your parents and PT. Wow. So you better wake up. The answer for 27. Bicep contract and pulls the radius. All right, yeah. 28. 
So the following task is or are performed by the kidneys. All of them. Hope you all know these sliders have a timer. All right, 29. Which of the following are functions of the skin in a human being? All right, so produces, I think we did this already. Producing hair, excretes sweat, protects from injury, produces, produces body temperature. Yes, all of them. 30. Which of the following substances reduces blood sugar in the human body? Well, answer one. Insulin. Insulin. Very good. So we want our next reader. Who doing 30 to 31 to 40? Very quickly. Add an eye. Come on. Add an eye. Even a mute he might. So we have we have to talk to his parents. Any volunteers would like to read 31 to 40 besides Bala and Huda? Which of the following actions occurs when a person feels cold? B. Okay, so when a person feels cold, blood vessels constrict. Yes, so less blood flows to the surface. 32. Which structure of the brain is responsible for the regulation of water content in the blood? So that will be C. Um, yes, hypothalamus. Very good. The long, the long process of a nerve cell which conducts impulses toward a cell body is called A. Axon. Very good. What is the correct path of travel for an impulse from the receptor to the effector in a reflex action? So that will be... Does that repeat? That'll be, that'll be A. It'll be... Actually, that one was not earlier. It was from, den from receptor to effector. So it was dendron sensory intermediate motor axon, D. Thirty-five. What country that going to? Miss right here. Oh. Item thirty-five refers to the following diagram of the eye. Which of the labeled parts contain cells called rods and cones? So that will be C, which is the, the um retina. Retina. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Very good. Andrea leaves a brightly lit area and ventures into a dark closet. Which of the following changes occurs in the eye? So that'll be A, radical muscles of the iris contract and the pupils become larger. Very good. Which of the following shows the correct path for sperms to exit the body? So that'll be A. A is the answer, yeah. Next. This is like the same past paper we did. Item 38 refers to the following diagram of the female reproductive system. Which label part facilitates the development of the embryo? So that will be number five, which is... Um, I, B, which is 4. B? 
Yeah, four, sorry, which is the? Uterus, right? Very good. Fertilization occurs when? The sperm enters the, no, the sperm fuses with the ovum, so it's C. Fuses, very good. The contraceptive pill prevents ov ovulation by B? No, A? We actually did the same one. So if you prevent ovulation, therefore you have to prevent which hormone? That's it. You're preventing the release of the egg, right? So therefore you're going to prevent the release of FSH. D. Oh, okay, next reader. Thank you, Kashida. No problem. Let me get somebody who's sleeping. Um, can I hear from Hawa, 41 to 50? Hi, Ms. Hi, good day. What's up? Okay, um, which of the following is not true about mitosis? Hold on. Others can answer. A. Very good. Ensures variation. Which of the following processes occur during mit mitosis? Oh, wait. Mitosis. Mitosis? Meiosis. Mitosis. Meiosis. Seamus? Okay, so two cell division, mm -hmm. movement of chromosome, yeah, creation of spindle. See. How many chromosomes are present in the nucleus of a muscle cell in a baby born with Down syndrome? Miss, do they have less or more chromosomes than us? An extra pair. Okay. See? No, somebody who normal is 46. Somebody who have Down syndrome. Um, 47. 47. Two normal parents have an albino child. If A represents the normal skin pigment of a, and A represents the albino condition, what may be the personal genotype of the parents? Mm. All right, so. B, miss? Two normal parents have albino child. B yeah. is the answer, yes. Okay. It have to be in the heterozygous dominant form. The World Health Organization defines good health to include. Physical, mental, and social well-being. D, thank you, Rina. Yeah. Which of the following diseases may be described as chronic? C. Chronic is diabetes, correct? Which of the following signs or symptoms occur during asthma attack? Wheezing, coughing, shock, coughing. C. No, C. Chest pain, bronchospasm. Sorry, no, not vomiting. Wait a minute. Oh, D. Shortness of breath, wheezing, bronchospasms. Okay. Which of the following vectors transmits? Miss, what's the H word? Hemorrhagic. 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 Dengue. Hemorrhagic fever. Mosquitoes. Um. 
B. Which one? No, C. D. This one is malaria. D is dengue. Which of the following organisms? Which of the following organisms causes malaria? C. Malaria, protozoan, very good. The correct sequence of the stages of the cycle of a mosquito is B. B. And B. Larva, adult, yeah. No. La is. All right, so adult lava pupa. Adult will lay the egg. Egg will develop into lava and then pupa. Okay. This one has an error. It's not pupa, then lava. All right. So who's doing six, 51 to 60? Sophia? Where, Emily? Go ahead, let's hear 51 to 60. Quickly, we have seven minutes. Eh? And these vaccine enemies and disease of funding and the antibody concentration increases rapidly. However, there is a gradual decrease in antibody concentration over the next few days. What type of immunity does Anthony experience? C. Type 1 diabetes is treated medically by an injection of a insulin. Insulin. Which of the following activities lead to air pollution? Burning of rubbish, use of pesticides in agriculture, release of industrial gases into the atmosphere, release of household detergents into the soil. Um, miss one and three. One and three, yeah. B, thanks everyone who answered. Water changes in the nation to the turbines and exhaust operation. C. Water into water vapor, evaporation. The correct sequence of the process is in the large scale purification of water is A. DMT is the same thing. Screening, sedimentation, filtration, yeah. I know why they have it. That's an error. Which of the following is the sign or symptom of the lead poisoning? Um, this, ooh, e? Brain damage. Which of the following activities can lead to, I don't know what to call it, eutrophication? Farmers applying fertilizer to crops, releasing detergents, sewage, and industrial waste into water base, bacteria decomposing organic matter from sewage and other sources. The one and two? Or, or One of them actually. C. I mean, D. D. Which of the following statements is true about Pippa tree? Latrins, um, a true, lovely place, the best soil for this, uh, D. Yes, D. Um, true, well, this should not be placed near wells either. So this one looks like the best one here. The best answer here, let me see. Bottom line of the landfill serves prevent they get some trash from drying off. Um, gases from escaping into the atmosphere. Hmm. Rats and flies from breed. I don't even like none of these answers. Trash from flying away, no. Rats and flies from breeding, no. Gases from escaping to the atmosphere, no. I'd have gases is in pipes, not liners. I will go with these. The last one. Which 
of the following best prescribes the methods to employ to control solid waste volume. So he puts all the soda can in a bin for cans only. That's I guess he was going to recycle it. Yeah, recycling. All right, so let's see which one we get wrong. So that's all of them are correct, what we did. All right. So you all could do it over again. Second the exam. You all could do it for your other subjects as well. This is just a demo of how it will be done for your exam, okay? Um, so that's it for today. Any questions? Um, yeah, miss. It will be just like that for the exam, so we will automatically see our results. As we no, I don't think you'll see your results like that. I'm not sure. It have to be. It will be the same questions, obviously. So I don't think you'll get your results after. You'll get it in August. And miss, you're unable to go back? No, I don't think so. However, um, they are going to have a meeting to show you all exactly how it may be. Or we'll send a document. Yeah, but then aren't we at an advantage, disadvantage since we can't check over our work? No, you have to check it over on spot. Like how we did it there? We had it yeah, before. No. But still kind of a disadvantage since people will usually check it over after they finish the exam. Yeah, but some people will go and cheat. True. Sure. Yes, Mister, but you all, we will do a lot of past papers, so don't worry. We have plenty multiple choice to do, eh? And that's it for you all. All right. So the homework is do some of the multiple choice i will send the years what to do from your booklet um most people have it whoever don't have it in hard copy let me know all right all right then